All right, we're gonna take a look at a couple ways to calculate the cross product of two vectors. Um, the first thing to think about that's really easy is, is uh, to get the direction that the cross product will point in. And I'm gonna teach you a quick, uh, what's called right-hand rule for doing that. Um, so what you do to get the direction of the cross product of A cross B, so that's gonna be our goal, is to find the direction of A cross B. What you do is you decide which vectors first, so in this case it's gonna be A. What you do is you, you kind of uh, point your hand along A and then just fold it into B, fold it into B and your thumb will point along the direction of the, of the cross product, okay? So you do this with your right hand. Right hand fingers along A, fold it into B, and so the cross product of A and B is gonna be down. What's going on here, it's kind of like, again, it's called right hand rule. It's like you're, you're turning a screw, you're turning uh, A into B, and when you turn a screw this way, it would advance downward, okay? So A cross B is gonna point down. Notice if you were doing B cross A, you would start with B and fold it into A, and then that would point up along the positive Z axis. Um, so again, since we're doing A cross B, it's gonna point along the negative Z. Okay, so, the, so before we even start, the direction is going to be along the negative z direction. You could say negative z hat, or sometimes if you use i, j, k, you could say it's along the negative k hat direction, right? Now, the, for me, the most versatile way, or, or the way that I will go to first if I can see it, is to get the magnitude of the cross product. Um, you just need to take the, per, the part of A that is perpendicular to B, and then times B itself. Well, so the, the, the A has two parts or two components. One component that's parallel to B goes back this way, and that's four units long, okay? So this, this component, which would be like A parallel, that's four units long. The component of A that's perpendicular to B, which points back this way, so this is what I would call A perp, um, so this little dude is called a perp, um, and that is uh, three units long because it goes three units in the negative uh, x direction. So a perp is three, and so if you want to find a perp b, that's just going to be then three times, and then the magnitude of b is six. Um, so it's going to be 18 units in the negative z direction. So this is the size of the cross product, and this is the direction of the cross product. Right. Another way to do this, which I would not choose in this case, is another method is you can take A times the part of B that is perpendicular to A. The trouble here is I would not opt for this one, or it wouldn't be my first choice anyway, is what that would be saying is you need to figure out how much of B is actually um, perpendicular to the A vector. So the problem for me here is that's gonna point off in some funny angle this, this way, like to try to make that a right angle. So what's called like B perp would point like this. And since I don't really see that so easily, I'd have to do a, a little bit of trig and so on to get that. Um, it's doable, but don't feel like doing it that way right now. I would not opt for this way, right? So possible, but not gonna choose that way. Um, another way to do it, that's kind of like brute force method, kind of, uh, uh, method that will is your go-to if you're not able to just see the perpendicular components is um, in the form of a, what's called a determinant. We're going to actually calculate A cross B in a, like I said, a brute force way. And so the way you do it is you say, okay, we're going to find A cross B equals, and what you do is you write the unit vectors across the top, uh, I hat, J hat, K hat, or X, Y, Z, either way. Um, and the order matters, you put the components of A in this row, so our A vector is minus three, minus four, zero, and our B vector is zero, six, zero. And then what we need to do is calculate this, uh, this determinant, and so what we'll do is we'll, we'll expand by minors, we'll start in this, uh, the top left, so we have the I hat component, cover the row and the column, right? So you'll have negative four times zero minus six times zero. So that's gonna be zero. So you have negative four times zero minus six times zero. So we get nothing in the I at direction. Um, 
Then you move to J hat. You're going to remember to oscillate signs. So you start positive here, you start negative here, negative J hat. Um, cover up the row in the column. So right, forget about that row or that column and that row. And so then what you do is you say, okay, I've got negative three times zero minus zero times zero. So we get nothing again. And we kind of knew that because we know this thing's going to point in the negative uh, Z hat direction anyway, or negative K hat. So now finally we are to the K hat direction. So you say plus K hat, you oscillate signs, plus minus plus. And now we're gonna ex expand this guy by minor. So cross that column and that row, um, and let's go for it. So you have negative three times six, minus zero times negative four. And you can see here we get our minus 18. So when the smoke clears, you get that the cross product is minus 18 k hat or minus 18 z hat if you wanted to use x, y, z notation. And so that kind of jives with what we saw before, kind of from right hand rule, is that the direction of a cross b is along the direction you'd get if you kind of screw a into b and turn the screw and it would advance this way. Uh, so those are a few ways to visualize cross products.